Chief Matherly, thanks for taking the time to meet with me. Well, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. You began your law enforcement career in Flint, Michigan, and most recently served as police chief in Altoona, Iowa. What was it about Iowa City that led you to pursue this job? You know, Iowa City is a, a combination of all the cities that I've worked in. Um, and, and as I get here and, and just finish my second week, I find that um, it's very similar to Flint, Michigan, uh, even down to the character of, of our police department, the building itself. You know, this is the place where I can, um, you know, hit on all the, uh, the experience that I've had overall. Um, from the busyness of the interstate to the activities in town here, um, you know, the, the metropolitan type setting, um, but also the, the citizens in the community itself are similar to the, the folks in, in Grinnell and, and Altoona. It's, it's a good Iowa town. From what you've seen so far, what are some of the strongest qualities you've seen in the Iowa City Police Department? And what are some areas that you see room for improvement? You, you know, it seems cliche to say uh, it's the people but it truly is the staff here. You know, from the folks at the front door that welcome you, to the records clerks, uh, to the officers themselves, and up to the, the, the command staff, uh, including our, our community outreach officers and, and community service officers. This is a very diverse group. They're a very uh, well-trained group, and they could not have been more welcoming to me. And I think that's a reflection on how they interact with the community itself. So there's some really good people here. You know. The second part of your question, <laughs> as far as improvements, you know, I'm a systems type of person, and, and I, I look at you know how things are operating. Are we being as efficient as we can be? Is a particular unit or division being worked more than than it should be, and can we uh, delegate some of that work elsewhere? Uh, so we're looking at all of that, and the command staff here has a good grasp on on what their duties are, um, and they are pretty good at telling me you know where we can make adjustments. Um, so we're evaluating those systems and, and uh, I think that's priority for us is to make sure that, that, that our work is, is being done um, completely and, and with expertise and, and not just uh, you know, a jack of all trades, master of none. We don't want that. The city has participated in a series of studies that have shown the disproportionality of traffic stops of minorities has gone down, but still African Americans and Hispanics are more likely to get pulled over. How do you see the department addressing that issue? Well, this isn't necessarily an Iowa City issue. It's a nationwide issue, and the reality is this. If um, those numbers are showing that, which we've shown that they are, uh, the, the mere perception that that could be occurring is troublesome for anybody. Uh, that is priority number one for our city council. It's priority number one for our, our citizens, and it's certainly priority number one for me. We cannot begin to uh, earn the trust of our community until this is resolved. Uh, we need to get rid of the, the race to crime ratio uh, or association um, and dispel that. And that comes with training and implicit bias. Uh, so we need to continue to work on that. That's number one. Uh, we need to look at how we're deploying our resources and make sure that we're addressing crime trends in that entire communities, particularly communities of color. At the end of the day, uh, you know, procedural justice is so important. We need to make sure that we're treating people with respect when we do deal with them and uh, that, that we're um, being as professional as we can uh, and as fair and consistent as we can. And the message has been clear to my staff since I've been here. And I can tell you, uh, they're open for change. They're open uh, for solutions. They're doing a good job out there. And uh, I want to make sure that I stand by them, um, but we also address this issue. At a time when law enforcement has been under some public scrutiny, uh, you made it a point to address in your swearing-in ceremony that you stand by your officers. Can you elaborate on that and talk about why that was so important for you to address? Sure. You know, they, they say that keeping the peace is like sausage. Everybody likes it, but nobody likes to see it being made. And because of that, uh, it, you know, some of the, the tasks that these officers have to do out there, uh, they're not pretty. Uh, it's a tough job especially uh, in today's society. It's a very tough job. And yet these officers go out every single day, they put the uniform on, and they serve the community and, um, and, and try to do what's right. Um, with that high level of scrutiny that we're under right now, we need to make sure that these officers are confident that if they're doing things right, if they're treating people fairly, and they're acting in good faith, that, uh, that we'll stand by them. They will stumble, I will stumble. Uh, and they need to be assured by the leadership of this police department that when they do, 
that will correct the issue and, and send them back out and they can do their job without hesitation, without worry. Uh, there's nothing worse in the world to be under a microscope. Law enforcement is. We live in glass houses and, and we need you know, to be aware of that. And these officers are trained early on in their careers that, that they're um, you know, under scrutiny. Um, but they have to have that support and they have that from me. Uh, I want them to, to go out and do a good job and work with confidence. The citizens will be better assured that they're being kept safe, that we're keeping crime down when they know that these officers are out there and they're knowledgeable, they're well trained, they're confident in what they do, uh, and they're going to get the job done and, and protect this community. Clearly you've been in leadership roles before. Can you describe your approach to running a department? I'm a very hands-on uh, chief. Um, I always have been. Uh, you know, when an officer is yelling for assistance, I tend to get my car and go. Um, I've been in those predicaments. I've had chiefs roll up on me and help me. And I thought that was particularly important, that they um, know that the leader will, will do exactly what they'll do. That's number one. Uh, I try to be personable and have a friendly disposition with the officers. We certainly have a professional relationship that needs to be maintained. Um, you know, I, I, I say I have an open door policy, but I pay particular attention to the chain of command. Uh, I value our command staff here and they're an integral part. And so I, I make sure that everybody's aware that we don't bypass the leadership here and that we have that unity of command, that there's one person you report to and, and there's a chain of command. But these officers also know that I will show up at roll call. Uh, I may show up on a call with them. Uh, I'm not trying to micromanage. Uh, I want them to know that I'm there for them and I want to see what's going on. Uh, and I think the officers will appreciate that I'm not making decisions based on, you know, sitting in, a, in an ivory tower and, and not, you know, understanding the ramifications that those decisions are going to have. That's the kind of leaders I like working for and that's what I insist on being here. Most people know you by your credentials and seeing your picture in the paper. Can you tell us something about yourself from outside of work and some of the things you like to do? You know, I've got uh, a wife, Laura. I've got three children. They're all grown, so we're empty nesters. Um, two of them live in Iowa and one lives in Michigan. Laura and I, now that we're empty nesters, uh, enjoy the, um, the activities uh, in town. And um, that's one of the reasons we moved here as well. We're big sports fans, uh, naturally, so we'll be following the university sports uh, at all levels. But we truly just enjoy, if nothing else, walking down to the Ped Mall and having dinner and, uh, and, and window shopping and just spending time together. So, you know, I, I balance my professional and personal life. I have fun at work, um, but I also like my downtime. Uh, and the two meld together, and I encourage the officers to do the same thing. Don't make it all work. Conversely, don't come to work and, and make it too much work. Have fun here. Be professional but have a good time and that'll balance your life very well and I think I've done well with that in my last 34 years in this job. Well Chief Mavenley thank you so much for meeting with me I appreciate it. Well thank you very much. Best of luck in the new role. Thank you sir.